Hey everybody, it's your girl, Charlotte Van Horn, Black Expats in Panama, by way of little old Glassboro, New Jersey, right here, bang, bang, on BlacksinRadio.com. I know y'all have missed me, I know, I know, but the reruns is good, right? Anyway, I am back, and you are going to be so excited that I have this amazing guest with me, or two amazing guests with me today, and it is Halisi and Rick of Our Black Utopia. Everybody knows them. They were kind enough to have me uh, on their show. And oh my goodness, I need to write them a check because I'm telling you, y'all just started buying up more tours. Our tours are so sold out. And speaking of our tours, one thing about our tours that I need to tell you is that I'm going to add some spaces because with this election coming up in November, everybody is like, I need the info. I need it now. I need the tour. I need it now. So we're doing whatever we can to accommodate that short of having an additional tour in the month because I'm not ready to do two tours in one month because I want to be with y'all every day. You know how that is. So Anyway, you know how this goes. I like to run my mouth. My guests like to run their mouth. And I want you to know as much about them as possible. So I do not have time to sit and chit and chit chat and smile. You understand? Because we got to get right to it. I'm going to bring in Helici and Rick. What's happening? Welcome to the show. And let me just tell them what I told you before we actually brought you on. Y'all is one good looking couple. If oh, another brother was to look at Rick, he would say, nah, I can't pull Halisi from that dude. <laughs> now, if a sister is looking at Halisi, she says, Rick will never be mine because they don't. When I say <laughs> you guys are beautiful, and what's so even fun. nicer about it is that your energy together is beautiful and you're just beautiful together. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Thank so you, thank besides y'all being fine and gorgeous, come on, introduce yourself and, and tell us about what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Charlotte. My name's Halicia, y'all. And I'm Rick. And we uh, are the founders of Our Black Utopia and Beyond the Bling Money Mindset Makeover for Financial Independence. Um, this ain't our first rodeo. No. That's why you see the love because we got the dumb stuff out of the way when we were younger. Got right? all that out the way. Yeah. Got that out the way. Now we understand what's really important. Amen. Right? Hey, I'm with that. Wait, where y'all where y'all at right now? So we live in Lisbon, Portugal. Uh-huh. Yeah. Right now, this is our happy place. And yeah. we just feel amazingly blessed wow. to be able to, to live here. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad to be back home. This is all right because we've yeah. been traveling. We've been traveling six so. out of the last eight weeks. Yeah. Wow. When did y'all get yeah. back to Lisbon? Oh, what, last week? Just last week Just from last week. yeah, from South Africa from Johannesburg. Yeah. Wow. And then you were in California, right? Once you once you're yeah. in California, I yeah, know. No you know, nowadays what is so cool is that it is just like not even crazy that we're in all these places. It's becoming more and more common. You ask the girlfriend, well, wait a minute. Wasn't that when you were in Cuba? Well, when did you see that? Was that when, when you were in Italy? It was just like a testimony. Yeah. It really is. And I think that if if folks, the folks who are on the sidelines who are talking about, gosh, must be nice. Gosh, I wish I could do that. The question is, are you prioritizing that? And that's, so that's where we were at, You right? Like, I, I love that Paula Pan says, you can afford anything, you just can't afford everything. Mm, that's so, good. Right, right? So it was like, okay, twin Teslas or retire early and travel the world. Come on. Come on. We couldn't do, we, now some folks out there can do both, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you want to, yeah. Some folks, yeah. some folks have got, got it like that. Oh, yeah. But if you don't, then you need to pr prioritize what brings you joy. 
And so often we don't prioritize what brings us joy. We prioritize what we believe other people expect our lives to look like. Wow. You say, you know, you, you really, you're really talking to me because I just said that yesterday. I said, I am just, you know, at the place in my life where I don't have time to care where other people think I should be doing or how I should be doing it or how I should be showing up. Honestly, and sometimes you say you don't care and you really care. Well, trust. And believe. <laughs> when I say I do not care, I don't care. You know, I'm not here to hurt nobody else's feelings and everything, but we have earned the right just by virtue of our age and having come through. Like you said, you and you and Rick, y'all, y'all beautiful now. And that's because you've taken your bumps and bruises. You all healed now. <laughs> you know, We're still healing a little bit, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> But you know me, me and me and Al, you know me and Al are like that couple on um on living uh, living color. That one they say still together, and the one is in the back trying to hit the other one over the head, you know. But they say, <laughs> still together, you know. So sometimes you know even after third, you'll be thirty one years this year. Even after thirty one years, I mean you you go through these times and just you learn how to put you learn how to put what's important first. Right. That part right there. Right. That part right there. Yeah. It'll be almost 21 years for us. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah. That's a big deal. That is, is a big, a big deal. deal. So tell me how y'all met. Through a mutual friend. Yeah, through a mutual friend. So it, interestingly enough, we're both from Southern California, but we met in Colorado through another friend who moved from Southern California to Colorado. And um, it's interesting because when I, I was trying to decide where out of LA, I wanted to move that mutual friend. I happened to talk to, he's like, come to Denver, come to Denver. I'm like, Denver, ain't that one of the places you fly? That's the place I go to go skiing. Yeah. Cause I was a skier. Yeah. Otherwise I fly over. Mm -hmm. Are there black people in Denver? Yeah. A lot of people ask that question. I ain't know. I know. <laughs> Yeah, there's something that, that are relocated here to Panama. Right. And and even here, which is amazing that like we had to move here to meet some people who were in Denver. Because the way I say it, uh, not including the immigrant the, the African immigrants, because we've got a lot in Denver. Mm -hmm. Um, but for the African Americans, it's like there's 200 black folks in Denver doing something. And you see each other at the same galas and yeah. parties. Wow. And, you know? <laughs> That's something else. So and you girl, decided to move here. You yeah. wearing that dress last time? You know, nonsense <laughs> like that. Nonsense like that. So you like met that. him in Denver? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that yeah. where you're from, uh, Rick? No. No, I was born in Ohio and raised in California, Southern California. She doesn't like me to say L.A. because I didn't live in L.A. proper. Oh. <laughs> I, lived, I lived in L.A. <laughs> County. What the fuck? Well, at least you ain't one of them that say you live in Hollywood. Oh, no. They, no. The, the Hollywood's the ghetto. So, so when you're from L.A., these people who don't live in L.A., L.A., talking about they from L.A., like that stuff out there ain't it, no L.A. It could be L.A. County, yeah. but you got some whole bogan. Why do I hear roosters? Yeah. Why do I hear roosters? <laughs> that ain't L.A. We hear gunshots, not roosters. Oh, <laughs> roosters are a lot safer. Roosters are safer. Yeah. Roosters are safe. You roost, roosters. I take, I take, I take the roosters or something right. in between. Because I don't like rural areas. I grew up in a very rural spot in New Jersey, and it's kind of the same thing. It's like I grew up in a place where I have to say, uh, yeah, I'm from Glassboro. It's like right between. Philadelphia and Atlantic City. You know, you got to tell them exactly where it is because nobody exactly. knows, you know, what it is. And people, the people have a tendency to think that New Jersey is this big, like, metropolis, like this big city type place. And it's not. A majority of Jersey is very rural. And I say, I am from, you know, it's called the Garden State for a reason. Right. right. Because most of it is very rural a lot a lot of small towns so you got people that even from Glassboro that'll say they're from like Philly or Philly area 
Even okay. though Tony is a half an hour, you know, away from us. But anyway, so I'm glad that you guys met and um, we're getting a chance to talk today. But what I really want to get to is how you ended up doing Our Black Utopia and being such um, an amazing voice and source of information for our people and financial wellness. Let's go. Let's get let's get into it. Get into it. Let's get dirty. I, you know, interestingly enough, our Black Utopia, um, the name we have owned since 2017. My fuzzy, 2018. No, it was after I ran for mm-hmm. office. So, because I was in charge of CBWPA. So I I actually got the name because we I was doing a community um I was trying to do a community building event. And it didn't work out like I wanted it to. But basically, the bottom line was, I I remember going uh, to a Black political thing, and they said, what would it look, what would a Black utopia look like? Wow. And I was like, okay. And so I was like, okay, so what if I got together all of the Black sorors, fraternities, and uh, legacy organizations like NAACP, all of those folks together, and we brainstormed what a Black utopia would look like in the Denver metro area. Okay. So, So that's why I bought the name, and I was actually volunteering for another organization. You hang on um, a second. Let, let me let me let me just back you up for one second. You said you say first you said you owned it and then you said you bought the name. Say explain that to us. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I didn't trademark or do any of the fancy stuff you did. Um okay. and, and, you, and, and for and for those who don't know, you know, there's certain criteria to trademark and register something. So at the time, all I did was buy the URL. And, and really, you never buy it, right? You lease it because you've got to keep paying, keep for, paying it for it every year, right? So we, so I've been leasing the name since 2017. The UR, the URL, the the uh, address, mm-hmm. ourblackutopia.com, and um, and so yeah, so that I, I bought it, it or or leased it actually um, from from GoDaddy or whatever, right? Like yeah. you, we know the places. We know the okay. places. Well, let me let me just say the reason that I asked you that is because I'm very sensitive to that. Let me tell you, I collect trademarks. You understand? I do. And what you're doing, like I was saying, you know, when I was bringing you on, it's like even like all the views. How many views did our interview get on your channel? So we have we have over forty one thousand subscribers to date. Uh-huh. Um, Praise God. And your video that we did with you overperformed. I think we got like 15, 17, 20,000 views on your video. Our wow. average is somewhere between four and 7,000. Yeah. Oh, well, I just want to say thank you because I did notice a lot of people sent me questions, um, you know, and, and every, I mean, the, the sales like went up and that's what's up, right? Right. So, I want to thank you. Like I said, I might know y'all a little chat, but I want to thank you for being who you are and doing what you do. And I just want to, and I know you know, I know that y'all know this, but I just want to encourage you to go ahead and trademark that thing. You know, having it as your URL and owning a domain, people can, I own so many domains. Because if you try to come for me, yes, I own the .net, the .com, the .org. I own it when it's written this. I own it when it's written this way and that way. My domain bills are kind of high. But at the end of the day, when somebody try to jack your stuff, and you have to help people understand, no, that's not us. People that's will not going to take your name. But they yeah. were trying to do things that make it look like it's the same thing. Right. right and I right. think we're at that. We might be at that point now. Our Rich Journey, who are two of our mentors, um, who actually gave us the idea of moving to Portugal. Mm-hmm. Um, is, that's another a younger black couple. They finally trademarked Our Rich Journey. But um, but interestingly enough, we see all the time people trying to pretend like they're them. And when you only have a thousand subscribers, it's like, okay, ain't nobody trying to do nothing. But, and and at the time, I know you have to have some kind of cross uh, state trade 
now that we do, we, we qualify, right? We qualify now to be able to go ahead and register and trademark that. But at, when I first had it, I, I didn't have anything to back that up. Well, so I, unless the laws, unless the laws have changed since the last time I investigated. Well, one of the things the laws have changed, and I'm not sure from that time if this even coincides with, with what you're saying, but I do know at some point the laws did change where you're more protected if you don't have, if you haven't actually gone the route. Because before it was just like, hey, you didn't trademark it, it's mine, that's it, that's right. us, what's up? First thing they're going to ask you when you trademark something is, when did you first disclose it? So when did you put it out there for people to see? And see yours, what I'm saying is you're going all the way back to 2017. And then even though, you know, you were, we were, you were using it for another purpose, it was yours, you know, then, and it's yours now. And so you could always dispute that. But depending on who tries to come for you, you know, you have to defend your, you have to defend yourself. And yeah. so I always tell people too, the other thing that you always want to do is use that TM because mm. the TM can, can, it can imply intention. When you see somebody, the only thing you cannot use, you cannot use a registered R because that means you have gone through the process. You've submitted your application and you have been awarded a trademark on that name. When you see that R, baby, that's why you see that R behind Black Expats in Panama. Don't come for me unless I send for you. <laughs> yeah. You come for Black so it's the R that's harder. For right. you. Really? Okay, for real, for real. And I'm very, yeah. and I'm so glad that that was the first thing I did was yeah. get a trademark. I have over, about four trademarks and I have one pending here in Panama that need to come up. Okay, because I don't, I always want to protect myself and you always want to assume that whatever you're doing is going to be oof, so big. Right. So when you started this out, who would have thought you had four, you would have 41,000 subscribers now. So how long was it that you took it into the YouTube channel? Like how long have you been doing these interviews? We and launched March 20th, 2022. What? So we're coming up on two years in a, in a few days. Yeah. You grew yeah. all of this in two years? Yeah, we did. We did. And the what reason. That too? So I. I think a good look at people. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. I attribute it to two things, really. One is the first thing is I took Stephanie Perry's YouTube challenge. I'm just okay. going to go give her a shout out. If y'all don't and know. She's awesome. awesome. She's awesome. And she's so giving. Yes. And, so and I think, right. And then the other thing is, I would say not being in competition with other black folks, but being in collaboration. Right. Uh, competition does not exist anymore. Mm -hmm. no. It does not exist. And so when you win, when you're on our channel and, and the folks who watch us come and they support you, everybody wins. It's a win-win situation. Everybody yeah. wins. Like if I cannot be happy that you sold out of all of your tours, yeah. then how can I expect the same for myself? Exactly. Right? We are in this together. And this is, the, if, if there is nothing more important about this, uh, interview to me is that because in the United States, they pit us against each other. And yes. that's why we don't have the power that we're supposed to have because we've allowed them to do that. And when we realize that the people who look like us are the people that we have to support and, the, and there's no crab in the barrel mentality, there's yes. enough to go around. There's plenty. Of there's so much to go around. But how do you put that, that, that right there? I'm totally with totally with you on this. I am. And I have supported a lot of people as well. And I I love it. Like you said, to, to be able to sew into other people, especially people that look like us, the impact that Black expats in Panama have made even on, uh, on the businesses of Afro-Panamanians here is like amazing. You know, I, I just met with the, um, the U.S. ambassador to Panama um, last night or the night before. That is cool. You know, we are really doing a lot of things. We're dealing with the, the commerce now, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, because we're making an impact. But what do you do? And that part right there, let me tell you, baby, I do that for free. 
because that's what's up. And at the end of the day, you reap what you sow. I appreciate the whole collaboration piece. Like I did something like that when I was in the hair business and I was like collaboration versus competition. You know, all the things that we could do together. There is no way that any of us can have the whole world you know, or the, our whole audience as as just our to ourselves. There's ways that we can work together. So mm-hmm. we are good at that. But how do you handle when people come at you from that other from the other direction of uh, them wanting to compete? How do you handle those kinds of people? I, I ignore them. Mm-hmm. And it's it's funny to me because uh, one of our clients, she was like. Um, so our rich journey or our black utopia now and and i i was like look we are not in competition no we're not in competition with the kids that's what we call them because they're in their 40s so they're young enough to be our kids right yeah and and um and i'm like this is what you can get from them and this is how we are different and you have to decide which is best for you i said but i'm going to tell you Everything that we know, not everything, but a good portion of what we know, we learn from them. So it's all good. Yeah. We would not be here today if it were not for our retreat. Like we wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for Stephanie Perry, if it wasn't for Rashida Dow, if it wasn't like all of these folks who have sewn into us. The people, I don't, I, I know there's one person here in Portugal who viewed us as a threat. She don't know we know. Mm-hmm. And, and I ain't said nothing because yeah. I think she's changed her tune once she figured out that we're not about exclusion, but inclusion. Inclusion. Like everyone who, who wants to put our community first when it comes to what we are offering has room in the tent. If you want to exploit our community, there ain't no room in the tent. You've got to build your own tent. <laughs> and that's how I look at it, right? That's how we roll. Um, they exploited us. Okay. But we will not be the oppressed people who imitate the oppressor. Exactly. Exactly. And you 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 will have that. And then but what what you just did was you said, you know, if it wasn't for, you know, some of these other people that are out here doing this, you know, I mean, you're giving them their props. And right. what, what I experience on a lot of occasions is that people just want to take, you know, you built when you when you say that your YouTube subscriber um, number is 41,000 and, and you've been doing this like a solid two years. That's amazing. But guess what? You put the work in. You know what I'm saying? You put the work in when you have someone or di- different people that just want to come in and capitalize on that. You know, uh, without putting the work in, that's a problem. And I agree with you. You know, you don't have to act like them because they act like they do. And I totally agree with that. And I totally just, I don't spend no time talking about haters. I do not. And that kind of people, I don't, because I, other things that we can talk about. But I did just want to bring that up because there's people that are wondering. So what do you do? What your intentions are is one thing, but then you have other people who have other intentions. And I am a firm believer too that that's what's yours is yours. And what you what you and Rick bring to the game, nobody else can do because nobody else can be you and Rick. That's yeah. Exactly. We're gonna be we're gonna be us, we are us. That's it. Exactly. You know, and I think I you know, in talking to different people and and one of the things that we did do is we didn't really say when you asked us the question of, you know, what made us start the channel and stuff like that is we started for other couples in our age range mm-hmm. that we looked at that were making over six figures a year and they're still on the grind. They're still doing it. They're still at it, working hard at it. And we're like, why you keep, why are you still doing this? Right. You know, there's a lot more to life out there than just that. So I think one of the things we brought to the table was not really thinking about it, but then it showed its face was we were showing people at an older age range how to keep your dreams alive, how to dream first and realize and set priorities and letting them know that 
if I can do this, you can do this. Yes. That's it. Yeah. That's yeah. it. And do it you had. And so tell talk a little bit about that, how uh, you all transition and how you're bringing that knowledge to the masses at this point. Well, so, you know, it's interesting. We did not find, for anyone who doesn't know, um, we are part of the FIRE movement. And FIRE stands for Financial Independence Retire Early. And now, you can look at us and say retire early. Yeah, we, she retired early, I did. <laughs> but if you didn't think you could ever retire, then retiring is retiring early. Because otherwise you did, right? Like, so, so... um you know, we call it fire over 50, right? <laughs> and um, so we became part of the fire movement back in 2020. And um, and we were looking for folks who got started, like who didn't have enough sense mm -hmm. to be, you know, saving 10 and 20% into their 401k and all of this from when they were 20 years old. Like I did that and then I took it out and spent it. <laughs> I cashed it out. Came on penalties, right? So for for the folks who didn't have sense when they were younger, but still got some sense and now trying to play catch up, where's that story? Yeah. And so we took the principles that were taught to us, um, not only by my um, stepmother, but by our rich journey. And said, now, how does this look when you're a little bit closer to Social Security? How does this look when you're a little bit closer to getting a pension, et cetera, et cetera, right? And how do you play catch up? And so, um, it, again, as he said, we designed this because there were two couples, uh, both of which not both couples qualify for Social Security yet. They were still too young for that. Mm -hmm. But definitely 50 plus or 49, 48 and then the other one's 50, you know what I'm saying, right? Of a certain age. Right. Y'all yeah. been grinding with these six figures for a dec. We've known you for a decade. Y'all been grinding for a decade. We've never made six figures. Collectively, yes, not individually. And so if we can do this, why y'all still grinding so hard? And I realized that what they don't know is what we didn't know. And that is how to figure out how much money you need to retire. Mm -hmm. If you're 40, it looks different than it looks if you're 55. How you invest when you're 40 looks very different than it does when you're 55 and you're starting from, uh, you know, the home base, home yes. base, right? Not on third you're base. You're a late bloomer. Right. <laughs> Look, keeping up with the Joneses is hard work. Mm -hmm. You know, trying to do black excellence is hard work. Mm -hmm. I gotta, I gotta be like the Jeffersons. Yes, right. We gotta have them twin Tesla. We gotta be moving on up. Oh, we yeah. gotta get, we gotta trade this one in for the McMansion out in the suburbs, right? Not up because we don't live back east. We live out west, so the suburbs, right? Yeah. I mean, we gotta do all of these things so that everyone else knows how successful and lovely we are. What we figured out was that doesn't bring us joy. And if we keep mm. doing that, we will never be able to retire. Mm. We will never be able to retire. And our dream was to buy an RV and travel around the United States filming and making documentaries. Wow. That was our dream. Now, you mentioned um, it didn't bring you joy. And I think that that is definitely worth me tapping in for a second because that is what it's about, you know? And, and honestly, one thing I, say, I always say about being in Panama is that North Americans that come here, even with our retirements, you know, our pensions, make way more money than the average Panamanian does. Yeah. However, common, even though Panamanians don't have as much money, they have way more joy. Yes. Yes. Way more joy. And I was like, okay, so what do you really want? You know, at the end of the day, what do you really want? And I want that joy and I want that peace. You can't put a dollar value on that. 
And I mm -hmm. think that once people experience it, they'll want it too. You know, how do they have joy without the Tesla? Exactly. We, I, I noticed it. I'm not going to speak for you, Sweet Pea. I, I noticed it when we were in the townships in South Africa back in 2008. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking around and I'm seeing all these smiling faces. And yet I'm not seeing the signs of prosperity uh, as we yeah. understand. Yes, it. exactly. Right. And um, for, for those of you who are familiar with South Africa, it, it was a it was a township that actually had permanent housing, not the temporary housing. Mm -hmm. So yes, there was a bit more prosperity than the folks who are still were still in the temporary housing at the time, but still compared to what we are used to. Yes. And yet all of those smiles and all of that joy and all of that curiosity that we saw, we were, we, we were uh, working with kids at the time and letting them use our video equipment and teaching them how to do this and that and the other. Wow. And it was, it was it was an amazing experience. We we were blessed. I yes. know they thought we were blessed. Yes, but we were blessed. Yes, it was fantastic. Exactly. I we love got. it. Yeah. So tell me about the financial independence course. Beyond the blame. Beyond is it beyond the bling or beyond the blame? Bling, 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 bling baby, bling, bling. bling beyond no. the bling because. <laughs> We could talk about both of those, you know, because a lot of a lot of people, you know, especially couples can get to the point, and say, you know what? Now, here we are. We're here. We're in our late 50s. And because you wanted to do such and such and such. And when we were in our 40s or in our 30s, look at us now. So what do we do? So that's why I was like, is it bling or blame? <laughs> could yeah, be blame. Both. But the bling, yeah. I get it. So talk to me. Because, you know, you know how we do. I remember, okay, I'm gonna go a little off course. I remember when I was younger and we and the black ski clubs were at their height. All right. When when the other ski clubs wouldn't let us in. Right. Girl couldn't ski a lick. We would show up on those mountains like we were stepped out of ski magazine. Yes. With the best With the, hat, right? the matching hat and yeah. the matching jacket and the ski outfit, and it could not ski. Yeah, but you look good. We look good <laughs> up in that place with our hot chocolate, <laughs> right? All the bling, all that money, all that money. And then you see the white boys skiing in some jeans. <laughs> and it's like, hmm, what are we missing here? And the thing about it is, and it, we get so many people into our comments about respectability politics. For us, African-Americans, we know that Looking the part, we believed, brought us some protection from the racism and discrimination. For centuries. But the only thing that is going to shield you from that is your financial independence. Mm -hmm. So you've got to get beyond the blame, beyond yeah. the trappings of success. Because the richest person I ever met in person the two richest people. One, when I met him, had a rabbit, the Volkswagen rabbit convertible. Was, he drove a Toyota. The richest person I ever met was driving a Toyota. Right? Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the one who was driving the rabbit convertible is the person who did Power Rangers. Mm. Wow. The other person that I, richest person I've known, uh, created a, a software um, security. That if I said the name, y'all would know it. And he drove a Dodge Durango. Mm. One was black uh, Egyptian. The other one was a white boy. Mm -hmm. Both of them were smarter than us, obviously, because they knew they had their priorities straight. And so when we started looking at how. I have nothing to prove. That I have nothing to prove to nobody. And we don't either. We just don't know it. Don't right. Know. Just and don't so. Exactly. So we figured out when we figured out how we were wasting money on buying things to either one, make ourselves feel better about the fact that we're giving up our lives to make other people rich. Mm -hmm. Or two, <laughs> self-medicating through shopping. And just not paying attention. We were spending a thousand dollars a month eating out. 
Wow. That's $12,000 12, a, a year that could have been invested into the stock market, making anywhere from 7 to 25%. Our portfolio right now is at 25%. Wow. Right? Like, once I realized that, my stepmother's like, baby, why aren't you investing now? Mm -hmm. Why aren't you investing? So we took the principles that we learned from fire and said, what would this look like if you're getting started late? And how do you play catch up? Catch and up. we developed right? And we developed a course and that's beyond the blame. And it's everything from assessing how much money you're spending to how to invest in real estate and the stock market, how to start your side hustle, right? So that you can work without working. Okay. And it's funny because you said, I don't feel like I'm retired. Like, I don't know how many hours you put in and some people it's just in them. And I get up every day and I go on YouTube and see where we're at and answer some comments and do that. Every single comment gets answered or ignored on purpose because y'all tripping, <laughs> right? Every single email, you know, there there is some work part of it and then the taxes because it's that season. But this is not work. This is. It's joy. Joy. You get a lot of joy. You get a lot of joy from it because you're you're doing something that is helping other people it's and that good. you enjoy. I mean, I think that's the biggest part. For me, it's it's I work 24-7. And I'm working, and that's because of just the way that the business has grown over the last year um or so, and just all of the extra things that have the opportunities that have been um presented. So right now I'm in that place where I'm starting to be able to delegate more out and I need to, but I can honestly do it 24 seven because I love it. So I have to make myself, you know, regulate, you know, how much I can really do. Uh, because exactly. I love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and that, and but that's a choice. Yes. And that's the thing, right? That yes. is the thing. It is. A um, we don't have to do this. Mm -hmm. no. We mm -hmm. found a place. And this is part of it. We found a place where we could live off of his social security check. Yep. So any extra is just that. Yes. It's for um, upgrading our seats when we fly to South Africa. Because <laughs> <laughs> I ain't doing that again. <laughs> my, my stepmother's like, oh, economy plus is four Emirates. Emirates is lovely. Yeah. But it's still economy plus. I will never do that again. Yeah. So, and that was our second time. But, you know, I'm older now. 2008 was a long time ago. <laughs> so we ain't doing that again, right? <laughs> so, you know, this is, it's, this is for the splurging. Mm -hmm. And then, so this doesn't atrophy. Right, exactly. And, exactly. That's equally and you're getting important. to live your life while you got it. Exactly. But that's the other part. You know, I mean, it's like, you don't know if you're a young, if you're a young person, you could be here today and gone tomorrow. Could be. But the one thing about getting older is that you know it's coming. You know, because it's something that we all have to do. We all have to be here. And as you start getting closer and older in age, you know, your body starts to change. Uh, you know, there's anything that can happen. You're more likely to start suffering from things like dementia and where you might be okay physically, but mentally you can't enjoy, you know, the things that you better do it now. Do it now. And so many people are, yes. are doing, they're retiring early. They say, you know what? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if I could work, some people be ha are actually having calculations like, okay, so if I work another two years or I work another three years, that's going to mean another maybe $500 a month in my retirement. But what if you don't live those two years? Right. You know, or is that $500 a month really worth the time, the energy out of your life and not being able to enjoy your life and to be a grow, we grown as hell. Grown right. as hell. And, and when, when you get to be grown and you have to ask somebody for time off. Thank you. It don't feel right. It Hello. don't feel right. It's not something no. that we should be doing. We are not children. 
we are not in the, you know, young adult stage where, you know, we're working and that's it. At this point in our life, we shouldn't have to ask permission. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I'm just saying, right? Yes. This is the time we, and then a lot of times, even though we don't ask our kids, we always got to consider them jokers. So you got all them years where you had to consider the children and consider this and consider that. And am I going to get the time off and this and that? This is the time when you should be able to just do what you want in your life. And like you said, you want to take your extra money and get an upgrade seat when you want, when you want to. And yeah, not right. to apologize or worry about busting the budget to do so. So, or so go, go, where, go where you want to go when you want to. Exactly. Or so, girl, we were in the wrong part, part of Johannesburg. <laughs> we didn't know. Wow, and my and and I and I kept missing my stepmother, and and my stepsister assumed that her mama told me where to stay, so she didn't say anything. Then when I when we got there, and I'm looking around, I'm like, where the, are we? And she's like, oh, you should have stayed over <laughs> here, girl. I went online and booked another Airbnb. Told the other guy, look, these rolling blackouts, I can't handle. I need a I need a refund. But even if I didn't get a refund, yes. it's nice to be in a position to just say this accommodation is unacceptable. I will pay yes. for a new one and yes. it will come what may with whatever refund. Whatever. Right? whatever. And yes. having that kind of financial freedom, y'all, y'all talk about reparations and 40 acres and a mule, what you going to get. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, using that blue passport, because come this time next year, it might not have as much power, y'all. That part. Using that blue passport, using the income that you have and moving to a lower cost of living where you can have some extras without a lot of extra work. Mm -hmm. They're like, why would you move to the place that started the Atlantic slave trade? Honey, this is my reparations. Mm -hmm. The people who started the slave, the, the transatlantic slave trade have now welcomed us and said, yes, we would love to have you here. Here's some universal health care. <laughs> US, US ain't doing it. They're not. There's no love there. And, and, I, and before I forget, I see that you guys have a new video out about um, the, the, the state of the, the state right. of the union, I guess you should say. Um, in the United States, and I wanted to get a chance to see that, and so I will check that out later and advise everybody to check it out because I know that's going. I know that's good. I know that's going to be good. You know, we we look. We stepped on some toes. Oh yeah, I, I, I know you did. Some folks came out of the wood. What we're talking about? My ancestors built this, and my thing is, we didn't break it. We can't fix it. They broke it. They need to fix it. We did not start systemic racism. And, you know, uh, there's a there's a book I've been working on for the past 20 years. <laughs> it's called. It's going to be good. It's going to be right? good. It's out, girl. Right? It's called The Economics of Racism. Mm. And the bottom line is racism costs countries money. Yeah. They think they're making money because they always have a working class. But that's like you ain't getting as many tax dollars. Nope. The every time you paid me less than what I was worth, you weren't getting the many tax dollars, and that's tax dollars that could have helped everybody. But y'all too busy trying to keep me down yes. to think of, to think about the bigger picture, and that's fine. We didn't break it; it ain't up to us to fix it. But we paid the price to have privilege and, and to choose. So and give you yourself permission yes. to not. Fight anymore. Like I fought. I did the marching. I did the knocking door to door. I did that. Yes. I'm not going to do that until I they put me six feet under. Mm. No. And I feel like if you if if you are of the mindset that I am never in the United States because my people bought that, then do you? That's do all you I boo? say. Then do right. you boo? Do right. you boo? Even with the political climate. Um, you know, it's just how we do things that end up ultimately hurting ourselves anyway, even like the political climate. A lot of the people that support this BS that is happening in the United States, they are going to be so adversely affected by the result. Right. You know, these people do not care about your poor white or poor black self. 
It's not about you. For you to be out there foolish enough, you know, to be cheering that mess on because somebody telling you something in your ear that it just, it just goes back to, um, you know, it goes back to being on the field, you know, being right. on the plantation. And now they got those white overseers, you know, that, that felt like they were important and big shots because they got to, they got to control the, the slaves. They were That's poor right. too, you big dummies. You know, it wasn't about you. You didn't get nothing when all that was yeah. over. You got to be what's white and let people make you think that because you were white, you were right. And you weren't a slave and you weren't being beaten. But what did you get for real, for real? Then they got right. mad, so mad at black people because they don't have nothing. And they blame black people forever because they didn't have anything. Girl, don't you get me started. Don't y'all do it. The biggest lie. The biggest lie they ever perpetrated, and, and, and white folks bought it, was to create a wedge between us and them saying, but at least you ain't black. So, so let me get this straight. You'd rather eat cat food every day and be white than ban with us so that you can have steak every day and be considered equal to us. Right. Do you, boo? Do you? Yeah. Seriously. I mean, we have people in our comments talking about Trump did more for us than anybody else and all this nonsense. And I'm like, so in my other life, I did politics and I will, I, I got to meet Michelle Obama. I got to meet both of them, but, um, but I got to talk to her one-on-one. -on -one. And I said, you and your husband inspired me to run for office. And she said, I'm sorry. <laughs> Michelle was keeping it real, don't she? It was hard for her. It was hard for her to 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 for that facade every now and then because she knew what it was like. She knew the truth. She knew. Yeah. She knew. We all knew. We, yeah. knew. we knew. But some people don't want, even us, even people who look like us do not want to admit that that man could not be the president he wanted to be because America was not ready for it. They were only ready for uh, what's what, uh, what's our, our man's name who broke into baseball? Oh, Jackie Robinson. They wanted a Jackie Robinson. Smile, look good, stay in your place and be the groundbreaker. But don't try to start a revolution. Oh, but no. Don't right? Yeah. You know? So, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, I, I'm concerned about our community. Mm -hmm. I'm concerned that we have fallen for the okie doke. I'm concerned because there's such an undereducation of Americans and lack of critical thinking. And whatever happens in America happens worse to us. Mm -hmm. So the lack of critical thinking, the lack of knowledge about what happened 100 years ago, and, and the signs that we see today that mimic what happened 100 years ago and the lead up to World War II are astounding. And I don't like, what are they teaching kids in high school? We all learned about this stuff. We all know the signs of fascism. We all know the signs of an autocratic government. And yet we're looking at a man who basically pees in his pants. Like this... <laughs> I don't see how anyone can look and listen to him and say, yes, this man is so much smarter than me and should be president. I just don't see it. To me, I only vote for people who are smarter than me. And if you ain't smarter than me, you don't deserve my vote. And, and then I got people in the comments talking about don't vote. It doesn't matter. Wow. I said, so when my mom and dad were out there on the streets dying and bleeding, for your right to vote, you want me to tell them, just kidding, we didn't need that. Yeah. Really? <laughs> really? You want me to spit in the face of my parents' legacy? How yeah. dare you? How dare, how dare you? you? How dare you even yeah. think? Because I'm sure your parents or grandparents were involved too. Yeah. Well, we, we have fallen for the okie doke. And, you know, um, 40 acres and a meal, we were a lot easier bought with a, a bins and a house. You know, saying a bench in a house, that's all.
That's all. Well, that's all we need. A Benz, a Benz, a Benz in the house and some red but products. Not, you know, not that, cash. Or not. Not cash. Not right. cash. But I, I think that what we what we're gonna find out and what I always try to tell people is first of all, stop talking to me if you don't have your passport. Stop. There's nothing right. for us to talk about. For real, for real. I'm just saying, and I, I don't I don't judge people, but you're wasting my time. Because the first thing that you need to do if you say you're serious about having choices and options in your life, you need to have a passport. And if you don't have a passport, you need to have an active application on file getting a passport. If you don't have that, we're not ready for a conversation. There's no need for you to pay for a consultation because you need to do that before you can even think about doing anything else. If you haven't bought yourself uh, up to the point of getting that passport, you ain't ready for nothing. Right. So stop talking to me about the repairs that you got. I, I can't travel because I'm going to travel, but I can't right now because the kids need this or I'm, I'm working on a kitchen or I'm working on a bathroom. We remodeling this. Listen, it don't cost you a paycheck to get a passport today. Right. Today. And, and people are, are, and I just did a video about this uh, last week. Listen, especially for the people, and I'm calling them out. The people that are closest to me in my life, I'm talking this every single day. I'm talking this every single day. I have brought over 400 people to Panama in the last three years. And you mean to tell me, you, you, you up close and in my circle, if you ain't got no passport, first of all, but they all, they all do have passports. But I don't believe that they're seriously considering that they need an out. They need a plan B. That things, what else do that has to happen in America for us to understand in North America for us to understand that shit ain't what it what it what you think it is, and it can change on the drop of a dime in a minute. Yes. The in things a minute. That are things that I thought I'd never live to see. D truly. And, and I, oh, I never thought I'd see a black president. So there's good parts of that and bad parts, right? <laughs> so for the bad parts, that now was here, the beginning of the end, baby. Unfortunately. They lost their mind. They lost their mind. That black man in that White House? Come on now. So you said something that I never thought about. So what we know is that in some countries, to keep their people from moving, they don't change any laws. See, this is what people don't realize. They're like, well, we can vote. They don't change any laws. The executive branch talks to the embassies and says, don't give any more visas. Exactly. Another way to do it is say, we cannot afford to process passports for $200 anymore. Now it costs a thousand. Mm. Okay. Right? You just said it doesn't cost a whole paycheck. And it's like, yeah, that's a way that they could limit our mobility. Today it's 200. I think it's still 200. Around there. Ish. Right? Two to 300. And it's less than a paycheck. I know that. The average paycheck. And so, <laughs> We're talking about a, a you know part-time kids at a at at, at Denny's. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only people who can't afford it. But you know, so yeah, absolutely. And so if if folks think that if if November 2024 goes sideways, that it's gonna be business as usual, that it's gonna look like 2016, they got another thing coming. I just hope and pray that that's not the last free and fair election in our adult in our lifetime. I don't know that it's going to be free and fair anyway, because at the end of the day, it's a reason these uh, courts are stacked, okay? Because you can bring any BS and, and you bring that BS so that it gets to, and if you don't get the results you want, you take it to the Supreme Court. Let's just be real. The Supreme Court ain't, ain't, ain't what it used to be. We are definitely in the Jim Crow, Jim Crow era. They're more, they've never been on our side, but they are more just in your face at this point than ever. And at the end of the day, I really think, and what, why are we talking about this? But <laughs> at the end of the day, I really think that we're damned if we do and we're damned mm -hmm. if we don't is when it comes to that election. Because if you think mm -hmm. that it was ugly back when he lost the last time, let that fool lose this time. Then and he's, he's, deal with. And then he's God already, wins. Yeah. They're already putting out, uh, uh, I saw a thing on Tucker Carlson, uh, a clip, 
they're already putting out the idea of there's no way that Biden can win. And if he does win, he cheated. He cheated. But let me they're already putting that out on the people's minds. But let me tell you guys, let me tell you, the only way that 2020, 20, 2000 can happen again is if the election is close. Every single state has their own electoral system. Every secretary of state, not the secretary of state of the United States, but each state secretary of state is in control of those elections. You are supposed to be voting for those people. When you allow somebody who doesn't agree with you to take that place, then they are controlling the elections that you are trying to participate in. Thank God in California, we have a wonderful secretary of state. In Colorado, we have a wonderful secretary of state. California, they probably do too, but, but they ain't as good as ours. <laughs> Who lets us vote by email? Every single state has their own electoral system. The only way the courts can, can change the election is to challenge state by state. That's the only way. If one big state like a Florida with the hanging chads, right? If one state is too close, then that's when the courts can step in. What they are doing on social media, there are active campaigns saying, do protest the election. And how do you protest? By not voting. Those are the people who wanna stay in power. The people who are paying for those campaigns want to stay in power. And the best way they can stay in power, power is to take away your civil liberties. And if you don't vote, you're letting it happen. I don't care if you vote for a third party person at this point. Just vote. Just, just vote. Like, could we have 90% turnout? Could we even have the turnout that they have in France and, and, and like in Western Europe? Like, you know, y'all tripping. Vote. So we, okay, so, you, you know, I, I think that we are very like-minded on a lot of that. Let me say this, though. I want to definitely, y'all definitely need to watch their, their last video. Was it the last one you did? Because I just saw yes. it today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely want to definitely watch that, um, that one because we need to pay attention. And, and it really ties into the whole Black city. You know, it's a reason black people are leaving the United States. If you want to stay, that's fine. I'm not I'm not here to tell you not, not otherwise. I'm not here to tell you to move to Panama. I'm not, you know, they're not here to tell you to move to Lisbon. What we are here to say, and I think I can safely say, is we, we're here to say, get yourself educated. Understand and exercise the options that are available to you today because they're not guaranteed. And get your financial house in order. You know, even when it comes to finances, I appeal to people that don't have money. Because you know why? They're the ones that, again, we have a lot of conditioning that we deal with. They're the ones that say, I, they can do it. But, you know, even though you know, they didn't make six figures individually, they made a lot more, I'm sure, than I did. I mean, this chick met Michelle Obama, right? But at the end of the day, they, people with, with meager uh, retirements, I think that relocation is for you, especially because you cannot afford on your retirement <laughs> in most states in the United States of them America, you cannot afford to live. You're going to work until you die. You're going to be a Walmart greeter because you will only be able to pay maybe for a roof over your head. So what I'm saying is, this is another option for you. You may not be able to come to Panama and live in the, you know, on Avenida Balboa overlooking the water. Now you might not be able to do that if your if your uh, retirement is too small. However, it'll go a lot further here than it will in most places in the United States. Plus, you get to have the freedom and the peace and the joy. That is just unavailable to most of us in the United States. I'm right. just saying. So I just paid our bills today. Uh, uh, well, I forgot to pay our utilities is, is what I'm admitting to. <laughs> and it's the middle of the month, y'all. So our landlord is so sweet. They're all in his name. And I like two months went by and he's like, oh, just a reminder. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I want to tell people how much it cost us for the basics. 
because I added it up today just to see, right? For rent, utilities, and transportation. Now, this doesn't include grocery shopping because I wouldn't, these are the fixed costs that I know, mm -hmm. right? $1,600. Wow. Rent, For rent, utilities, and, and transportation, and like transportation. Our, our metro cards. So what, so what type of unit do you have? What's your house like? So we're we're in a uh, an apartment because we live in Lisbon, which is basically the Manhattan of Portugal. <laughs> there are not a lot of single family homes. There are some brownstony type houses, but they're few and far between. So we have a flat. It's three bedrooms and only one bath. Um, it is big for European standards. It's bigger than we thought we would get, mm -hmm. and it is in the center, the city of the center of the city. So we're like 10 minute walk to the tourist area. Very close, yeah. But outside of the tourist area where the neighbor, the real, real people live, <laughs> the normal people yeah. live, right? So we're in a Portuguese neighborhood, but we're a 10 or so minute walk from the tourist area. And we live here in Lisbon, Portugal, and our basics are $1,600 a month. That's good to know. I mean that's good that that's very that's very good to know. And so right. when you do when you do the the so when you do the financial the financial independence um course just tell me real quickly how do people engage with that? So it is self-paced and um I'm I'm updating it right now especially with the new interest newer interest rates and they've come back down so the real estate investing module is being um uh, well, all, all of the modules are being updated. So it is self-paced, it's online. And then every second Saturday of the month, we have group coaching. We've also started a stock study group. So if you want to get beyond just investing in index funds and things like that, and you actually want to start um, managing your own portfolio of individual stock, we're studying how to do that, how to evaluate companies. And so that's an add-on. Um, that will go to subscription model, but for all the people who already are part of Beyond the Bling, they'll just get it. It'll just be a part of it, right? So, so it's, yeah, self-paced and it's, you know, everything from analyzing your expenses, how to save, how to create your savings rate, how to figure out how much money you need to retire. Exactly. What is that number? How do you figure that out? Because, Carol, we talk to folks who have a million dollars, literally, Mm. Talk about, but I don't want to be homeless. <laughs> I'm like, how do you get from a million to homeless? The, we are, we just don't know. Just don't and when you listen to the Susie the Orman reference, the U.S. is their only point of reference. Exactly. And when you listen to the Susie Ormans and the David Ramseys of the world, first who shame you, right, and then tell you you need ten million dollars to retire, you're like, okay, well, I can never retire. Yeah, I'll never right? retire. Exactly. exactly. We retired. We retired with about $200,000 in our retirement accounts, mm. as well as two years living expenses. Mm -hmm. Here's the key. Control your spending. Yes. And the emergency is for emergencies. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah. It's not for that Gucci bag, right? Yes. So two years living expenses you know, I, I think that anyone would feel comfortable being able to do that. But the key is, is we decided we were going to live on one social security check and where can we live the way we want to live? Because, you know, we're still a little bougie. Let's not get yeah. it. <laughs> Let's not get it yeah. worth it. We a little bougie. <laughs> we like traveling. Right? We like going out. We, we like, like nice out. things, living in a nice place. Like, I'm not putting up with a bunch of nonsense now. Come on. Right? So where can we live like we want to live and still be able to do what we want to do on that amount of money? And right. everything else is extra. And it's just as simple as that. It really, truly is. And so we go into stock uh, investing. How do you do that? Real estate investing. Real estate investing for FI, for financial independence, which is different yeah. than thinking that the home that you live in is your investment. It's got it, yeah. yeah. Right, that's, that's it's not an investment. If it doesn't generate income, it's not an investment. Right. So tell me this, how do people find the financial course? Just come to ourblackutopia.com. 
Okay, mm -hmm. ourblackutopia.com. Okay. Um, the course, and it's right there. We've also got some free stuff. You know, okay. we've got free downloads and all of that you can find under resources. We have a move abroad toolkit that's like, I don't know, eight euro or something like that. Um, you know, for folks who who are pretty self-sufficient, just need some some extra. But if you don't understand how to get your money straight, be on the bling. It yeah, really let is. Me show you. And also, <laughs> we even show people the uh, how to work for yourself, how to do things for yourself. Yeah. Your side hustles. So how to take your skill set and or your hobby and make some money. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you know. uh, that's that that's that's good stuff. And um, you're doing meetups now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we did our first meetup was last year. Um, I had my feelings hurt because we didn't have our green card yet. So we couldn't leave the country. And Exodus Summit, the Exodus Summit crew, the black women. Yes. were meeting in Marrakesh and I couldn't go because we were stuck here in Portugal without green cards. So I'm like, OK, well, Marrakesh, Morocco's just right there. Cross the yeah. cross the water. Cross the water. So after Marrakesh, just come over here to Lisbon, and they did. And they did. Wow! <laughs> wow! So, so we had about seventy five people, and of them, about fifty of them came from Marrakesh from the Exodus Summit meetup, and they came here in Lisbon in April. And then our rich journey, they have their meetups at the end of June. So I'm like, if you. Our rich journey. <laughs> come, a little come, early. come a little early and hang out with us. And they did. And they did. Yeah. So, girl, that was a lot of work. Are you <laughs> trying to work that hard? Uh, I'm not uh, trying to work that hard. So this year I we need up, are, I need up tonight. Right. See? Mm -hmm. the, and and you know, and this is not just an informal how how about we all meet at this restaurant? This is, you know, pay tickets and boat excursion and all of that. You know, so we're gonna cruise okay. the river we're gonna have a reception you know hey. the bar and all of that stuff um catered and all of that that's but, nice. What's your next one so june 17th and june 18th june uh, june 17th and 18th 2024 we have partnered with krishan of black sick global uh -huh. and because I ain't trying to work that hard, right? <laughs> so the two of us together, you know, we we did that together. We also did a move to Portugal virtual summit together. Those uh -huh. replays are available. So if Portugal's on your list, that's what I was going to say. We were talking about the, the money thing. I just got to throw this in. So people email us and ask for, ask for scholarships to the move to Portugal virtual summit. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, baby, if you can't afford the... $180 or whatever for this summit, you can't afford to move to Portugal. Yeah. I'll give you a scholarship to our financial course. That's what you need to do first. Okay. <laughs> right. So anyway, we, we gonna hang out on the boat. We had fun last year. We're going to do that again. And, so um, and then it's, it's two days. Are y'all going to spend the night on the boat? No, no. It's, no. Stay, it's, it's just a, it's like uh, a sunset a tour thing. type of thing. Okay. So you know, ranks 17. Food. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the 18th is the party. A party on land. So party on the boat, party on the land. And this is this these are not kid events. Yes. Teenagers probably could have fun because we're gonna be playing the music and doing this and that. You know, they might try to sneak a drink or something. But kid kids, it, these are not kid events. Yes. Neither, neither are mine for the most part. Yeah. Uh, so I definitely and, understand you know, that. What well, we have over my limit when I because I get to talking. I don't have a time with that freedom. Y'all got you be live on on um YouTube for two hours. Look, there's somebody trying to get they they show on after me on the radio, and so I got to get ready to go. But it was amazing spending this time with you, and you know I think what resonates with me is how we support each other. And how yes. I really feel that the or that you're like being on your show really gave me a new audience. I got, you know, people were exposed to me that that didn't know me. And at the same time, people were exposed to you that right. didn't know you. I mean, because the you said the, the, the show overperformed. That means it's more eyes on you. That's what happens when you collaborate. Thank you. Thank you. 
Seriously. And so I, you know, people had been asking us about Panama and I'd been following you for a while, ever since we started thinking about, okay, where? Because I'm taking Spanish. Uh -huh. Brother man comes up talking about Portugal. So <laughs> that's, that, that's a whole nother story. But so I'm taking Spanish. So I'm looking at Panama. I'm looking at Costa Rica. I'm looking at Mexico. So I've been following you since the, since like the middle of the pandemic, maybe somewhere around there when it started getting serious. Yes. And so I asked my audience, I said, who should we interview? We got to talk about Panama. Charlotte, 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 Charlotte. <laughs> okay. Okay, All right. We were so you know our audience. Some some folks in our audience knew who you were, uh -huh. and some folks didn't. And that's what it looks mm -hmm. like, y'all. When you step out on faith, when you come from a place of love, when you know that your sisters and brothers, we are here to help each other. Yeah. It's not about uh, competition. And everything. The whole thing works out. Yeah. Money just comes to us. Yes, it just comes to us. It does. We don't. Even like what you know when I, I I if we were instrumental in helping you sell out, it mm. just it just comes to us. Exactly. That's what it happens does. when you are and I expect it. That's the it universe. Happens. That that that's how that's how it works. You know, and you reap what you sow. And um I that's why I say Panama has been very generous to me. We are constantly right. giving, um, and I'm so happy to give, you know, because what what I'm receiving is just like, oh my goodness. You know, right. I mean, beyond the the, the financial um, benefits, because again, you know, I, I don't have to work either. And that's, I, I didn't think I'd be here at 60, you know, and it's it's been like this for the last few years, but doing what I want to do, you know, right. um, and I'm loving it. And just to be able to have so much joy, you know, at this age and to say, and to be able to really say, you know how people say to you, sometimes they say, I'm in a good place. Don't you yeah. love it when people say that to you? Yes. It makes you smile. It makes my whole everything smile because I know what that means. And it's so often for not. I mean, I just pray that they find out soon. Yeah, yes. It's, yes. It's, it's good for people to come up and say, you know what? You gave me hope. You showed me how to dream again. You told you showed me that it's still possible for me to do things. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Absolutely. You look good, girl. You look good. No. Yes. And so, y'all, this is what it looks like when you ain't got all that stress. <laughs> when you ain't looking over your shoulders at the cops, this is what it looks yes. like. Come join us out here in these international streets. Yes. People are living longer. People are coming to Panama getting healed, baby. Literally, between the fresh food, the warm weather, the lack of stress, you know, honestly, the 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 people coming out here and they like, I didn't have a tribe at home, but I have a tribe here in, in Panama, you know, mm -hmm. and I just, you know, learning a new language, I just think it all adds up to goodness. So we got to mm -hmm. go. But I really want to thank y'all for being on the show uh, with me. And I hope to see y'all in Panama soon. Or I can get out to Lisbon. Okay, come on. Come on now. You are now come Let's on out here. He, he's got me wanting to come out here since we talked the last. He said, when you're coming, it's like, shoot. I know. Y'all yeah. need to we, come on. Y'all need to come. We're going to make it happen. Y'all need to come when we do doing the Cultural Caribbean Day. We usually do that on like the third of the month. So when y'all start planning, let me know because I want to make sure y'all here for our group tour. You will never forget it. You will you it is the best way to best way possible to see um pa uh, Panama. Oh. So thank oh, you for coming. Cool. Thank you, Charlotte. Okay. Thank you. And there you have it. Was that awesome? I mean, <laughs> I know we got off a little bit, but at the end of the day. You know, paying attention to the political environment in the United States is a big part of this relocation thing, okay? Because there's so much that have happened to us in the past that seem to be like kind of coming back. I just want y'all to be mindful of that. And, you know, uh, Rick and Halisi, they just being, they just being honest and they just being true about what they're talking about. But what I also like is that they're giving us some tools they're giving us some tools to get your financial house in order. You know, some people come to Panama and they just count what it's going to cost 
to live like the, the main staples, like the Hemisi talked about, but not considering all the other things that you might have to consider paying. And not to mention, you still got bills in the U.S. So you still got to account for that. So while you're preparing to make this move, to make this black sit, you know, start paying down some of them bills. Have a plan for that. And I know this is not popular and I don't care. But what I'm saying is this. People file bankruptcy for less. I'm just saying. If that is something that you need to consider, you know, in order to get your financial house in order, I'm not advocating for you to do so. But I'm saying rich people do it every day. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my, my mouth? Don't let people make you think that bankruptcy is something that's shameful. We've paid a lot in interest and and, and um, just e extra money for things. And a lot of times, by the time you have, have had a credit card for a few years, they've made their money. You know, don't don't get personal about it. Honestly, don't. Do whatever you need to do. You know, by whatever means necessary, do what you need to do to make sure that you are safe, that you are sound, and that you have the peace and joy that you deserve in your life. Listen. We gotta run because you know I'm over again. But I just really want to thank Khaleesi and Rick for just who they are and what they're bringing to the table. Definitely check them out on Our Black Utopia. Um, their YouTube channel is out of this world. Um, the information is just off the chain. So definitely uh, want to do that. You know, one of the their favorite songs is "Ass" by Stevie Wonder. So we're gonna leave um, on the radio part of this. Uh, we're gonna leave you with "Ass" by um, Stevie Wonder. Listen, I love you. I love you. I love you. And there is just nothing that you can do about it. This is your girl, Charlotte Van Horn, Black x in Panama, coming to you um, from Panama City, Panama. And listen, just so excited about all the things that we have in store for you this year. So stay tuned. As always, I want to thank my main man, Daryl Spears, and the Conversations Podcast Media. And of course, Devin. Um, uh, Riley, Devin, Riley, and I'm getting my goodness, Riley and Devin. Okay, I want to thank them for just kind of being the spearheads for Black Set Radio and giving us a chance to put our voices in the world. So, listen, until next time, peace.